Model 3 and Model Y are almost sold out for Q3 in the United States. A fantastic opportunity for other car makers to catch up and gain some market share in the EV space. We started having quite a few decent alternatives recently. Mustang Mach-E is among them, but what about your opinions? In this episode, I will test drive a fully electric Volvo XC40 recharge. Stay tuned. Bakunin Live. If you are new to this channel, I am Michael Bakunin and I used to work for Nissan and used to own various versions of Nissan Leaf in the past. Currently Tesla Model Y is the only vehicle for our family of five here in the US and no surprise, I am very often comparing electric vehicles with the benchmark from Tesla I own. And I am actually being criticized for that from time to time. But please, be patient and join me for a test drive offered by a Volvo dealership in Palo Alto. But before you do so, may I please ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. The look and feel is exactly where I was expecting Volvo to win. I'd be honest with you, I've never owned a Volvo, but I always had Volvo cars on my shortlist. The design is unique and recognizable, no doubts you have a Swedish masterpiece in front of you. Very high attention to detail, quality of materials, paint and sound. I started having dents and scratches on my Model Y, from day one and my wife even wanted to report the door closing issue until we realized that actually all doors have the same issues and you just need much more effort to close them. And now a look at Volvo. I'm slightly pushing the door and it closes gently and easily and with a very nice sound. In terms of pricing, XC40 is comparable with Model Y. It starts from 54K, but you can also have the 7.5K tax credit. When you lease the vehicle, the offering on Volvo's website is $599 per month and 4K due at signing. This is the exact amount the majority of Tesla Y owners would pay. Basically, the same price but you get a much smaller vehicle. XC40 is 30 centimeters shorter than Model Y. No way you can squeeze in the third row of seats. Model Y also easily wins when it comes to cargo space. 68 cubic feet versus 57.5. And this becomes especially noticeable when you open the frunk. Look at that. They embedded organizers to store the tire repair kit. And now what you have left? some space for your iPads and smartphones. The trunk space is also very limited. And I think this is where I'd need to share my hypothesis. The CMA platform XC40 recharge is built on was not uniquely designed for electric vehicles. Therefore, you are carrying over all the heritage from the gasoline world to pure electric vehicles, meaning less ruminous and less storage space. As an example, we are used to a flat floor for passengers in the rear on EVs, but it's not the case yet on XC40. Same issue on Polestar 2, by the way, which is also built on the same CMA platform. Let's look inside. It's quality and comfort. It's a Volvo. Volvo designed the XC40 to reduce environmental impact. As an example, no leather and the interior carpeting is entirely made of recycled plastic. The vehicle is very quiet. It has two screens, driver and center displays, but still too many knobs for my taste. It's Android based with Google Maps, not so bad at all, but subjectively it was hard for me to find features I was looking for. And the size of the center screen is a little bit small, just nine inches. One feature I liked is the bird eye 360 degree view. Tesla doesn't offer it and this is one of the features I keep missing after transitioning to Tesla from my Nissan Leaf. There is no start button, but you still need to use a key fob. 
When I started driving, I immediately felt that the vehicle was very heavy. And I was right, plus 150 kilograms compared to Model Y. XC40 has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is pretty close to Model Y, and overall it's smaller, meaning the vehicle is gaining this weight from somewhere else. Is it the thickness of the sheet metal? In terms of EPA driving range, Model Y is the clear winner here. Volvo was expecting much better EPA numbers, but 208 miles is only what they've got. Weight is part of it, but also energy efficiency, I would guess. Polestar 2 on the same platform can do a little bit better, 233 miles, but still a lot of room for improvement. For home charging, Volvo is recommending a three-phase 11 kilowatt wall box. It's a nice advice. But in the US, homes are mostly powered by 120 volt single phase electricity. Therefore, be prepared to use the charger which comes standard with the car. The first question which came to my mind, could XC40 be your only family car? It has a CCS connector and can accept 150 kilowatt of DC power, which allows it to fast charge from 0 to 80% in 40 minutes. This is not exceptional, but pretty reasonable, but the driving range won't allow you to travel without range anxiety. 300 miles on one charge is still the benchmark. Where Volvo won't disappoint you is power and acceleration. XC40 has two motors all-wheel drive and 400 horsepower. XC40 can go from 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Just a bit faster than the Model Y long range without a software update, which can reduce my Model Y's acceleration time to 4.2 seconds. The good news about XC40, it's available. You can order and get your car almost immediately, while the Model Y's estimated delivery time is September. Lisa, my wife, liked XC40 a lot, and maybe if it's your second or third car, why not? A 208 miles driving range will allow you to comfortably do your all daily errands such as schools and groceries, and for road trips, you will need to use something else. Overall, not bad for the first pure electric vehicle from Volvo. What else to expect from Volvo? We've recently learned about a smaller version, C40 Recharge, and Volvo's plans to release XC90 Recharge pure electric sometime later next year. And you know what? It will come standard with a built-in LiDAR from Luminar and NVIDIA Drive Orin system, which will increase safety and hopefully allow Volvo to automate drive even further. I'm not giving any advice here, but I own some shares of Luminar Technologies, and I believe this company has a bright future if it succeeds integrating LiDARs into XC90. Chinese are doing that already, new ET7 is a good example, but now it's time to see serial production vehicles with built-in LiDARs in Europe and in the United States too. Did you like this episode? Hit the like button and see you next week.